there always comes a time where I exhaust myself and I enter, I can feel it creeping inside of me. And it is the week or couple of weeks of complete introversion in which I cancel most plans and all I want to do is be left alone at home watching my little films, <laughs> reading my little books and uh, just staying indoors and it feels, it feels so good. And yeah, maybe a few tips here and there. I mean, I grew up with a single mother who worked quite a bit, um, especially during school holidays. I really had to just learn to entertain myself and learn to be my own friend, <laughs> um, which I think kind of really prepped me for life as an adult, which sometimes can be very lonely. But we're going to cover some of these topics, I hope. <laughs> Uh, but before I continue, I just wanted to take a second to thank Ana Luisa for sponsoring this portion of the video. If you've been watching my videos for a little while or follow me on Instagram, you know I'm always wearing the same damn golden earrings and the same damn golden necklace. <laughs> because I adore them and they're such good quality. I got those pieces like two years ago and they still look like they're brand new. I recently got some new pieces to add to the collection and I'm really happy about it. Ana Luisa is a wonderful company. All their metals are noble and recycled whenever possible and their gems are transparently sourced. Ana Luisa is also a climate neutral company and they believe in circularity. They donate all returned pieces to dress for success and have saved the equivalent of 14 tons of carbon and 16,000 gallons of water. They also release limited batches and their designs are contemplated with all styles and gender expressions in mind. So these are the pieces that I got. I got the Michelle earrings, these golden earrings. I also got this beautiful necklace. That's the Mish necklace. And I love how simple and delicate it is. I love the, the green gem as well. I also got the Kinoko marble blue earrings. And I think that these are just my absolute favorite. I love using statement earrings now that I have short hair and when I had shorter hair, they're just so much fun. And I feel like these ones, you can dress them up, you can dress them down. It's been really hard taking them off. Ana Luisa is having their biggest sale yet. If you buy one piece, you get your second piece 60% off, which is an amazing deal. They have so many more pieces online and they're all quite gorgeous. I'll leave a link in the description box below if you would like to try them out. I'm sure that you will adore them. I hate the idea of learning to be alone because ultimately we all die alone. <laughs> As if learning to enjoy your own company is contingent to the ultimate atrocity. And I see this rhetoric all the time on social media and it is the focus on yourself. Don't rely on anybody else because everyone else will disappoint you. And that to me just feels so brutal. I hope that we all have people around us that love us. We have a good circle of friends that will pick up the phone when we need them to pick up the phone. The reason I think it is so important to learn to enjoy your own company and to learn to be alone is because it will add so much richness into your life. I don't do it because I'm doubtful or I'm suspicious or because I know that everybody in the world will disappoint me. <laughs> and of course, in many ways, I rely solely on myself, but my goodness, would my life be so dull and so plain if I didn't have my friends around me. The lovely thing about spending time on your own is that the care and the niceties and the love that you get from your friends and your family, you can also access from yourself. Of course, they will be very different, but I think ultimately both are extremely necessary. In any case, this is a video about how to be alone and why it's so important to be able to enjoy that if you don't enjoy it already. Um, but let's take it from a space of, we don't do this because it's our last resort. We do this because we get to do this. This isn't, it's, it's not from a place of, you better get comfortable being on your own because you're gonna die alone. 
gosh. <laughs> I promise it doesn't always come back to this, but this just seems like the such an easy example and one that so many people can relate to and it is being single and actively dating. Um, dating can be cruel. It can be a cruel <laughs> experience and it can awaken some old insecurities and it can create some new ones and then I leave a date and I feel awful and miserable and then I take myself on a hike or I run myself a bath or I walk to the park with a book and spend some time on my own and oh my goodness, I feel so much better and I'm reminded that, you know what, I'm pretty good. <laughs> I'm pretty fun. And the thing is, I don't want to say that running a bath will solve all of your problems. It will potentially not even solve one problem. <laughs> but what I will say is that I can guarantee that it'll make you feel a teeny tiny bit better and that is a better option than how you were before. <laughs> it provides a lot more clarity. It provides so much more perspective when you feel a little bit better. But this isn't for single people only. If you're in a relationship, it's potentially even more important to learn or relearn to spend time with yourself and enjoy that. I genuinely wish in my past long-term relationships that I had spent more time with myself and not more time with the people I was with because gosh, that's the first thing to go out the window um, and taking myself out on a date and creating some newness not just for myself, but for the relationship so that I could come back to whoever I was with and recount what I had gone through and create some new experiences, which I think is vital for a long-term committed partnership. <sighs> so that's, so that's that. That was a very long, as if we don't all already know this. Enjoying alone time is all about romanticizing your life and one way to do this is to slow down, notice things and take your time and I would argue that doing all of this is easier to do when you're on your own. I've learned all about romanticizing my life from my friend Dane, he does it so effortlessly. I'll call him and I can hear jazz music in the background, he's making himself a martini, I'm sure he's lit every candle in his room and he really has a way of making life feel very intentional. Being alone isn't necessarily about spending lots of money on yourself, you don't have to do that at all, but it is about indulging a little bit. At least, this is how I make alone time feel really lovely. One way to indulge without spending money is to take time off to slow down. That might be the ultimate indulgence in the world we live in right now. Which brings me to my next point. How I make time to spend alone is how I make time for anything. I plan it. The important bit is to not make it the last resort. Don't just spend time on your own because everybody cancelled on you and you have no other option left. If you're not introverted, this will rarely feel good. So what I like doing, I have a little ritual. Most Mondays I take myself to the cinema, I buy myself a glass of wine and when I leave the cinema I go for a walk and if I'm in the mood I'll take myself out for dinner. All of these things I do now quite easily and I enjoy them so much but I used to be very scared of doing these things on my own. What I like to remember is that I do have friends, I do have people I love and adore but I choose to spend it on my own to show myself that you know I love and adore myself too. If you never spend time alone, I would suggest starting small. Make a plan with a friend and then get there 20 minutes earlier with a book or a journal or run yourself a bath and challenge yourself to one hour away from your phone or pick a very lengthy recipe to make and put a good playlist on and take your time. I promise you, you are truly not missing out on anything. The world will always be there ready for you to engage with it again and again and again. The humidity uh, these days makes my hair do things like this. I don't know, I'm not sure if I'm liking it or not, but welcome to the segment, the Q&A segment of this video. I asked, as I tend to do over on Instagram, if you had any questions on the topic of, you know, spending time on your own, and you had many questions, you had many questions, but I'll just answer a few. I'll answer the ones that came up the most. So the first one is how to deal with sudden waves of sadness brought on by loneliness. And I think there's many ways to answer this question. I think, first of all, 
waves of any sort of emotion is, are very normal and just like a wave of like sadness loneliness a wave of happiness as long as it's not all consuming and preventing you from living you know your life then very normal it's just part of being human um, I also think that potentially these emotions would be more prevalent if you don't tend to spend a lot of time on your own or if you're treating alone time as your last resort as in I don't have any friends, everybody has cancelled on me, nobody wants to spend time with me and therefore I must make do and entertain myself. When we treat alone time as the last resort it will rarely feel nice, it will rarely feel nourishing because you're taking it from a place of lack you know easing yourself into alone time reminding yourself that you do have friends and that you do have people that love you um, and potentially if you continue to feel this way over and over again it might also mean that it's not the time to spend time on your own the thing is not to suffer through life to i don't know access some sort of lesson or access some sort of growth that is not the point i don't think that's the point ever the point is to feel good and so sometimes being alone is exactly what you need but if being alone is not making you feel good over and over and over again then reaching out for help or reaching out to your friends maybe a better idea in the end we all need alone time we all need alone time to recharge to process to you know enjoy our own company and to be functional human beings but from it varies from person to person how much time is required so maybe for some people it's just like an afternoon every two weeks and for other people it's like every day you have to have alone time or you need a whole week on your own um, and that's about figuring out uh, what works for you? This was a very common one. How do I feel less anxious about joining classes and hobbies on my own? Um, and this is one of those things that you can try and rationalize all you want and trying to do all this mental work in order to get yourself to go to this activity or to join a workshop. And the thing is that you won't learn until you actually just do it and it becomes a skill and it becomes a habit. So I think just pushing yourself and signing up for whatever it is you want to sign up for is the only way to get over that. <laughs> the thoughts will always be the same. You will, at least for myself, it's always the, oh, what is everybody going to think of me? I'm coming on my own. Oh my God, this is humiliating, blah, blah, blah. The reality is I've done workshops on my own. I've done workshops with my friends when I'm with my friends do you know what I'm thinking about I'm not thinking about the people around me I'm thinking about my friend and myself <laughs> and when I'm there on my own I really am just thinking about my I'm really just not uh, paying attention to anyone else around me um, and that's that's always what tends to happen everybody's just too busy thinking about themselves um, so you know go <laughs> when I first started really doing things on my own was when I moved to Sydney and I didn't know anybody and I was really committed I remember telling two of my friends who lived abroad I told them I am so sick of waiting for people to want to join me to go do things um, first because I have no friends because <laughs> I don't know anybody <laughs> um, but second because when I do have friends they also have different schedules sometimes or sometimes their budget doesn't allow for whatever or they're not interested in the things that I'm interested in and I am so sick of missing out on things just because someone else doesn't want to join in and so I went to concerts on my own, I've gone to dinner, I've gone to the cinema, workshops, you name it, I've done it on my own um, and it just becomes easier the more you do it and ironically I met a lot of people through doing things on my own <laughs> so <laughs> just just do it, just do it, plan it, get it done, you'll be fine how to prevent the urge of spending all your time on your phone it's just about placing boundaries uh it's just about placing boundaries and being strict and disciplined with those boundaries for me what has worked in the past and what i'm doing again um is taking weekends off social media i can really not do like this do only two hours on social media a day i'm more of an all or nothing person and so just having a chunk of time in which i know that every week this is this is just what i do i delete instagram off of my phone um, and i spend 
the weekend away from social media. I think it's just all about boundaries and making it a priority to get off of social media. Because even if you're spending time on your own, if you're on your phone, <laughs> I would argue that that is not spending time on your own because you're in a constant conversation, a rapid conversation, a never ending conversation and you're just consuming, consuming, consuming and it's just so fast paced. It's really hard to process any of that. How to enjoy time on your own when you're not feeling good about yourself or you're having a negative inner monologue. There's a few ways I think to tackle this question. I think what I would ask back is do I really need to be spending alone time right now or would I be better off reaching out to a friend or a therapist? Of course, I understand that we must also learn to navigate sadness and navigate feelings of discomfort on our own but sometimes it's not necessary and I am really against this idea of healing yourself or learning to get out of ruts or I don't know, loving yourself in isolation so that then you can present yourself to the world bright and shiny and new and healed. That's just not the way things work. I think we heal through our relationships and we can also, uh, you know, gain some perspective from being in conversation with friends. But if you are craving alone time, you want to be alone and don't know how to navigate that, I would say that sometimes it's all about just reaching out for pleasure and rather than you know trying to decipher what it is that is making you feel this or that or trying to fix it why not you know reach out for something that you know will make you feel good i think just grasping for those things um you don't have to like sit in meditation and <laughs> constantly uh circle and ruminate around this inner negative monologue you can distract yourself um, in order to make yourself feel good and when you feel good as i've said before i think you can gain a little bit more perspective and understand that you can or remind yourself that even when you're feeling really low you know what your feel good toolkit is and you can access that okay i think the last one so that this video isn't two hours long um I got many of these. I'm going through a breakup from a long-term relationship. How do I navigate this with alone time? I think I would answer this question similarly to the past one, which is, is this, is this the time that I need to be spending on my own? Um, and if it is, and if it is the time that you should be spending on your own, how can I make this time feel really lovely for myself? Because I don't think like when you've just come out of a breakup, it's all about making things feel easier. It's about feeling loved as well by yourself and by other people. I think better self-reflection comes from time and space from a breakup and from just feeling better. And I think spending time on your own and just upping the self-care and upping the self-love routine will ultimately remind you that all the really lovely things, all the niceties, all the care and the love that you got from someone else wasn't created by someone else. It was just being reflected back to you, but it was all, it was all within. <laughs> and you can still access that and you can access that through just being kind with yourself, being compassionate, taking a long shower, watching a comforting film. But again, look, I think sometimes we, like to look at our lives on a day-to-day -day basis rather than zoom out a little bit and look at it from a month-to-month -month yearly basis and i think that there are times in which we are going to spend a lot of time on our own and it will feel like we are extremely isolated and there's no balance in our lives and then there'll come another season in which we are extremely extroverted and if you zoom out you'd be able to see that that is just kind of the ebb and flow of life and there are moments and events that require you to just kind of 
take time off completely and then there's other times in which you just want to be open and engaged and with people <laughs> all the time <laughs> now i much rather look at my life in seasons and each season just requires something different from me and when i've gone through breakups it's been very intense engagement with my friends because that's what i needed in order to survive and then a little bit of an intense time period of just being on my own to process everything i had been through and then it kind of became just like oh a little bit of a long time here and a little bit of friend time here and you know it's it's that's that's the way we move through life <laughs> so yeah practice compassion and and that is that for now i think that's the end of the video but i don't know maybe it is maybe it isn't i'll say goodbye just in case bye <laughs> i hope you enjoyed <laughs>